The U.S. believes that Iran or its proxies could strike Israel in the next few days. This is according to a new report. It cites people familiar with intelligence officials. They said that the question is more about when the attack will take place rather than if it will happen. The officials believe that a major strike on Israel is imminent. This is because of an airstrike uh, that destroyed Iran's consulate building in Syria last week. Iran blames Israel for the attack and Tehran has vowed revenge. The German airline Lufthansa has said that it had suspended its flights to and, fro, uh, to and from Iran's capital Tehran. Flights were terminated from April 6th. They will continue to remain suspended until at least today. This is because of the threat of the potential Iranian attack on Israel. Meanwhile, an Israeli attack in Gaza has killed three sons of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. They were killed after their car was bombed near the Al Shati refugee camp. Reports say that four of Haniyeh's grandchildren were also killed in the strike. A video purportedly shows the moment Haniyeh received the news of their death. His sons are now among the highest profiled figures to have been killed in the war so far. After a brief lull, the Yemen-based Houthis have claimed responsibility for another attack. They say that they targeted four vessels in the Gulf of Aden. They added that the ships included an American vessel. The Houthis have been targeting ships in the Red Sea ever since the Israel-Hamas war broke out. The US and Britain have carried out strikes against the Houthis in response to the attacks. Russian airstrikes hit the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv yesterday. They hit a clinic and a pharmacy, killing at least three people. Two others were injured. Meanwhile, rescuers continue to search through the rubble for victims. North Korea's Kim Jong-un is once again stepping up war preparations. During a visit to the country's main military university, Kim said that now is the time to be more prepared for war. He said it's because of the unstable geopolitical situation surrounding North Korea. In South Korea, the Liberal Opposition Party secured a landslide victory in the country's parliamentary elections. The results deal a resounding blow to President Yoon suk yeol and his Conservative Party. Following the results, Prime Minister Han duk soo and senior politicians have tendered their resignation. The leader of the President's People Power Party, Han Dong-hoon, has also said he will step down. U.S. President Joe Biden held talks with Japan's Fumio Kishida during their ongoing summit. The leaders unveiled plans for military cooperation, including a new missile defense system. Biden and Kishida further spoke about strengthening their alliance to counter threats from China and Russia. Chinese President Xi Jinping has said that no one can stop the reunification of China and Taiwan. He added that outside interference cannot affect the quote-unquote family reunion. Xi said this yesterday during a meeting with Taiwan's former president Ma Ying-jeou. His comments come amid simmering tensions between the two regions. China claims Taiwan as its own territory, however Taipei denies Beijing's claims. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the India-China border situation needs to be addressed urgently. He made the comments during a recent interview. He added that he hopes to restore peace in the region through bilateral engagement. He stressed that stable India-China relations are important for the entire world. Some 200 Myanmar soldiers have withdrawn to the so-called Friendship Bridge, which connects the border town of Myawadi to Thailand. This comes after anti-junta rebels declared that they had won control of the critical border town. Following this, a long queue of people was also seen at the border. They were, seeking, uh, they were looking to leave Myanmar amid the intensified fighting and explosions in the area. 
Anti-government protests intensified across Argentina yesterday. Hundreds gathered in front of government buildings in Buenos Aires. Protesters blocked key routes in the city, disrupting traffic. Meanwhile, riot police officers used powerful water cannons to disperse the crowd. Protests have intensified across the country against President Javier Millet's austerity measures. Millet has drastically slashed government spending, laid off public workers and cut subsidies in a bid to apparently stabilize the economy. Three people were left injured in a shootout in the American city of Philadelphia. It happened near Clara Mohammed Square, where around a thousand people had gathered to celebrate Eid. The police have arrested five individuals following the incident. The motive for the shooting was not immediately clear. In climate news, the United Nations climate chief has, alert, has uh, issued an alert that world leaders have only two years to take action to avert climate change. He said that the world needs stronger plans to lower global greenhouse gas emissions. Scientists have warned that the world needs to halve its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. This is to stop extreme global warming that could be catastrophic for the planet. Southern states in the U.S. have been hit by severe weather, including high winds, flooding and tornadoes. Severe storms have killed at least one person in the state of Mississippi. The high rainfall led to flooding in low-lying areas of New Orleans. Meanwhile, a tornado hit the city of Slidell in Louisiana. The tornado uh, ripped roofs of of buildings and partially damaged other residences in the city. More than 30,000 homes and businesses have been left without power in parts of Louisiana. Canada is at risk of another catastrophic wildfire season. This is according to the government. Canada expects higher than normal spring and summer temperatures, boosted by the El Nino weather phenomenon. Last year, Canada endured its worst ever wildfire season. More than 6,000 fires had burnt down around 15 million hectares of land in the country. Guatemala has declared a natural disaster over raging wildfires across the country. The country is facing at least 44 active wildfires. The disaster declaration is expected to free up more funds for firefighting efforts. Panama has unveiled plans for a dry canal to move cargo between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. This comes amid low water levels in the century-old Panama Canal. The Panama Canal usually handles about 6% of global maritime trade. However, authorities have been forced to limit the number of ships passing through the canal. This is because of a drought triggered by climate change and the El Nino weather phenomenon. The European Union has approved a new set of rules. This is to tackle waste generated by cosmetic and pharmaceutical uh, industries. These two sectors will need to cover 80% of the extra investments needed to eliminate micropollutants. The remaining 20% will be covered by uh, EU member states. On to business and tech news. High fuel and housing costs drove U.S. consumer prices to a seven-month high in March. This is according to data released by the U.S. Labor Department. Consumer prices rose by 3.5 percent last month. This is the country's highest inflation rate since September last year. Data shows that gas and housing costs accounted for more than half of the price rise in March. Jack Ma, the founder of the Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba, has hinted at a possible comeback. Yesterday, Jack Ma sent out a letter to Alibaba employees. He praised the company's ongoing reorganization efforts. Jack Ma nearly disappeared from public life. This was after China's regulatory clampdown on his firm in 2020. Since then, Alibaba has undergone a major overhaul and sweeping management changes.
Tesla CEO Elon Musk has confirmed that he will be visiting India. In a post on the social media platform X, Musk wrote that he is looking forward to meeting with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During the trip, Musk is expected to announce Tesla's investment plans in India. The US is launching a new round of probes into the Boeing 737 door blowout incident. The US National Transportation Safety Board has said that it will conduct new rounds of interviews with Boeing employees. In January, a door panel of a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet blew out mid-air. It was later reported that some bolts of the door panel were missing. Japanese steelmaker Nippon uh, plans to acquire U.S. steel have come under more scrutiny. The U.S. Department of Justice has reportedly launched an antitrust probe into the deal. In December last year, Nippon announced a $15 billion takeover plan for U.S. steel. However, the proposal has faced backlash from U.S. lawmakers. The lawmakers are concerned uh, regarding potential job losses in the country following the takeover. Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC has reported over 16% uh, reported an over 16% revenue surge in the first quarter. The firm earned over 18.5 billion dollars in the first 3 months of 2024. The chipmaker said that the high demand for artificial intelligence chips has helped its earnings. TSMC is the world's largest contract manufacturer of semiconductor chips. The firm makes chips for tech giants like Apple and Nvidia. Employees at an Apple store in the U.S. city of New Jersey are planning to unionize. The employees have filed an application with the, with the American National Labor Relations Board. The Apple store employees want to join a New Jersey-based union called the Communications Workers of America. This is the fifth U.S. Apple store where workers have filed a petition to unionize. Google has announced a $1 billion project to boost connectivity between the US and Japan. The tech giant plans to lay down two new sea cables between the two countries. These cables will also connect the US and Japan with multiple Pacific Island countries and territories. This includes Guam, the Commonwealth of, Northern, of the Northern Mariana Islands and Hawaii. Meta has unveiled details about its new artificial intelligence chips. The firm has claimed that its next generation chips can train AI models much faster than its peers. Meta plans to deploy these chips to power AI products on its social media platform. India has become the world's fourth largest exporter of digital services. This is according to a new report by the World Trade Organization. Digital services include online professional services in sectors like finance, education and gaming, among others. Indian firms exported over $250 billion worth of digital services in 2023. The country has surpassed Germany and China in digital service exports. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Gujarat Titans beat Rajasthan Royals by three wickets in Jaipur yesterday. Rajasthan scored 196 for three in their innings. Parag Agarwal and Sanju Samson shared an impressive 130-run partnership for them. Skipper Shubman Gill scored 72 in 44 balls during Gujarat's run chase. In football, Barcelona beat Paris Saint-Germain 3-2 in the first leg of their Champions League quarter-final yesterday. Rafinha has fired the opener to give Barca the lead. PSG struck twice in the second half through Usman Dembele and Vitinha. Rafinha equalised uh, with his second goal before Andreas Christensen headed the winner for Barca. A Spanish court dismissed appeals against the release of former Brazil star Dani Alves. He was sentenced to four and a half years in prison for raping a woman in 2022. Alves, who is now on a provisional release, walked out of jail just last month. His legal team is appealing the rape conviction. In tennis, it was a setback for Rohan Bopana of India and his Australian partner Matthew Ebden. The world number one duo have crashed out of the Monte Carlo Masters. Bopana and Ebden lost to Mate Pavic of Croatia and Marcelo uh, Arevola of El Salvador 3-6-6-7. Uh,
former world number one Rafa, uh, Rafael Nadal is eyeing a comeback at the Barcelona Open. The 22-time Grand Slam champion has been injured since the Brisbane International season opener. It forced him to pull out of the Australian Open, the Indian Wells and even the ongoing Monte Carlo Masters. Nadal took to social media yesterday to express his desire to play at the Barcelona Open. Men's world number two, Yannick Sinner of Italy, has reached the round of 16 at the Monte Carlo Masters. He defeated American Sebastian Corda 6-1-6-2 in straight sets yesterday. The Italian is chasing his fourth title of the year. Sinner next faces Jan Leonard Struff of Germany in the next round. Formula One racer Carlos Sainz of Ferrari met a tennis world number two, Yannick Sinner, yesterday. Uh, Sainz was attending the Monte Carlo Masters. He sat and watched Sinner's impressive win in the round of 32 and later interacted with the Italian after the match. Ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu secured a first round victory at the Badminton Asia Championships. She downed Malaysia's Go Jin Wei 18-21, 21-14, 21-19 in the first round. Sindhu won the three-game battle in 64 minutes. This was her fifth win over the world number 33 Malaysian shuttler in six meetings. India's top-ranked uh, men's badminton player, Ajas Pranoy, also reached the round of 16 at the Badminton Asia Championships. In a grueling battle, he defeated Lu Guangzhou of China 17-21, 23-21, 23-21. The match lasted 90 minutes. Pranoy will face uh, Chinese Taipei's Lin Chunyi in the round of 16. Athletics has become the first discipline at the Paris Olympics to award prize money to gold medalists. This will only be for champions who are participating in the track and field events. Athletes who win gold will get to take home prize money uh, worth uh, 50,000 US dollars. Payments for silver and bronze medalists are planned to start at the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. In entertainment news, Rihanna's latest photo shoot has sparked a massive controversy. The photo features her dressed as a nun, revealing a tattoo on her chest. Social media users are accusing her of sexualizing nuns and mocking religion. This is not the first time that the Grammy winner has faced a backlash over religious insensitivity. In 2021, she was accused of cultural appropriation for wearing a pendant depicting a Hindu god in a topless photo. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner's 15-year-old daughter has come out as transgender. They introduced themselves as a Finn at a memorial service for Garner's father. Finn was formerly known as Serafina. Affleck and Garner split in 2015 and shared custody of their three children. The actor duo have uh, been outspoken about keeping their children out of the limelight. Zendaya recently opened up about the attention that her personal life receives. The actor recalled a time when uh, she and her partner Tom Holland were spotted in Paris. Zendaya said she was actually fine with the paparazzi clicking their pictures. The couple first met on the sets of Spider-Man Homecoming in 2016. Conan O'Brien made a comeback on The Tonight Show after 14 years. He made an appearance to promote his upcoming series, Conan O'Brien Must Go. He had been fired from The Tonight Show in 2010. Despite his departure, the comedian maintained a thriving career by hosting his own Conan show for 11 seasons. Sydney Sweeney recently confessed that Leonardo DiCaprio is her first movie star crush. However, social media users were quick to point out the age difference between the two stars. Taking a dig at DiCaprio, they said the 26-year-old Euphoria star is too old for him. The Titanic star is infamous for dating women only below 25 years of age. The first look of Michael Jackson's biopic was shown at, the, at CinemaCon in Las Vegas. The film titled Michael stars the late singer's nephew Jafar Jackson in the lead role. According to reports, the movie will feature over 30 songs and recreate several performances of the Jackson 5 band. The biopic will also take a look at allegations of child sexual abuse against the music, music legend. 
Meanwhile, the trailer for the upcoming film Wicked was also presented at CinemaCon. The musical fantasy stars Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo as leads. Wicked is the first chapter of a two-part immersive. It's scheduled to release in the US on the 27th of November, while the second part of the film will hit theatres in November next year. Margot Robbie is set to produce a live-action feature film titled Monopoly. The Barbie actor will produce the project alongside Lionsgate Entertainment Corporation. The plot of the film is still under wraps, but Lionsgate uh, che Lionsgate's chairman has said that he has a clear point of view for the film. The Chinese pianist Lang Lang was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yesterday. Uh, the star said that this was the absolute highlight of his life so far. The 41-year-old has worked with some of the world's leading orchestras. He's also sold millions of albums. The first ever Asia Star Entertainer Awards took place in Japan. K-pop star Jungkook, who's a member of the boy band BTS, won the Song of the Year Award. Meanwhile, K-pop boy band Stray Kids won the Best Group Award. Stray Kids also emerged victorious in the Album of the Year category. From impeachment to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.